then I told myself like feature by feature, like if you do, if you land the quad on the step down, do the cash roll. If you do the cash roll again, do this. Again, a 360 quadruple bar, massive again with a cash roll. And then I did the double in my second run and I was like, Ah, you could have done three. Look at one. this! He, he did. He's an absolute lunatic. He's learning these tricks in comps. No way! That, there's no way he's done a 360 triple bar spin on a drop that big. No way! No, of course he has. We haven't got that in the UK. No one does. He's from the Lake District. Everything's rock. <laughs> got Jake Atkinson here today, fresh from Red Bull Roof Ride, second place finisher. Like, you must be absolutely over the moon. I can't yeah. even. So let's help set the scene for our roadie and mountain bike friends who aren't familiar with slope style. What does it take to get invited? Because you can't just enter this, can you? What does it take to get invited to Red Bull Roof Ride in the first place? Well, through the smaller competitions to build your points up through um, through the world ranking. And then, because uh, it's an event, these events, only 30 people will be invited. Uh, so they invite the top 30 in the world. So you've been gaining points through the series in the UK, yeah, the Dirt Wars. Dirt Wars events. And you've done a couple of silver events this year, haven't yeah, you? Yeah, so yeah, started in yeah, Switzerland, silver event. Um, um, roof Rider, right, this is a gold level, yeah. and you're second ever. Yeah. <laughs> so it's a hell of a second. Yeah, it was. <laughs> so when, when the call came in, I remember you, in two minds, whether you were going to go or not yeah, yeah. what was the decide what 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 made you say yeah i'm going the deciding factor of me going wasn't like because i knew it was massive i knew it was like the biggest event and i don't really like riding big jumps because i've never ridden them so it's quite hard to like something you don't do the deciding factor was the only way i'm going to get good and enjoy riding big jumps is by going and riding big jumps so that's why i went and then getting there and seeing how big it was it was like yeah it's, it's definitely big and then <laughs> riding it it was like, yeah, it's going to be hard to qualify top 12 out of 28 riders. That was as in your mind, hard yeah. to qualify top 12. Yeah, yeah. Because the top like 12 go through to finals. 12 go through to finals. Yeah. Out of 28 of us, I was like, well, I'll be happy to get, get through. So you weren't point. expecting to qualify? I wasn't not expecting to qualify. I knew I could qualify. It okay. was just but it was a lot putting a run down on that course was was like obviously playing. I, think, I mean, it was playing on everyone's mind, trying to get a top to bottom run on that course. It was just huge. Without a crash. Yeah, yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah. Yeah, no one wanted to crash on that course, so no one was really doing big tricks in practice. There was the odd rider, probably probably maybe five riders out of the 28 were doing like actually big tricks in practice. Everyone else was just waiting. So your, your run then, at what point, uh, what point did you know that you might be up there? Or So I was in the heat of eight at the end, and I dropped, third, I dropped fifth, so I was like third from last rider to drop in. Yeah. So I was already late to drop anyway. Okay. So you kind of watch mm -hmm. everyone else ride, watch where people crash, watch where people, see what people do, see the scores. Um, and yeah, I dropped in for my first run and I hadn't tricked the first jump in practice yet. So I knew I had, the first time I was going to trick it was going to be in my first qualifying run. So the big question, I guess, is did you go, did you plan to qualify first? Because I guess if you no. don't know this, then qualifying first gives you the benefit of watching everybody else do their run and then you having to decide what you need to do on your run to, to beat them. That's yeah. the, that's the yeah, benefit, yeah, isn't that's it? Just, yeah. So, so um, was there a goal to try and... No, not okay. at all. No, the plan was just to qualify. Not, <laughs> not anywhere near first. Um, do you think yeah. you took people by surprise? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Because I think... I mean, I think everyone knew I hadn't been doing tricks in practice, um, because yeah, again, the second the second jump uh, on the on the uh, bottom section of the course, I uh, I only flipped it like three times in practice before my run, and I did flip bar whip on that jump. I want to go to your third run, so we're going to skip ahead of quite a bit. So you've done you do three runs in finals, yeah, so. and you gain points, and it's the highest total score, isn't it? Yeah, so it's so, yeah best or, best out of your three run, runs. Yeah. yeah. Best out of your three runs. So. You are lying in third place after the first two runs. You've got one run to go. You're the last one out of the ramp, so you get to see everybody go before you. The two big names of the sport, Simon Godziak and David Gosniak, yeah. have just dropped and put in. David Gosniak's just done that insane trick, which we'll talk about. Yeah. <laughs> and it's your run. Like, there's a fantastic picture, and the commentary is insane. We'll overlay it, of, um, of you just looking absolutely focused. First appearance, really, an event of this magnitude. The best qualifier in third place after two runs with that 89.18. What was going through your mind then? <laughs> um, 
I don't know really. I, I I try not to really pay too much attention to what other people are doing when I'm at events. Um, like I just I mean I watch people ride, but I'll never I'll never change my run based on what other people are doing. So you were thinking about your run. Yeah, the whole time. And, and were you thinking, I... can I improve it yeah. or do I solidify it and like yeah, bank so, it? Yeah. So actually, for finals, they did kind of a weird format. So there's three runs, which is really rare. That never happens anyway. Um, but we did your first run and your second run, it was the best score out of them two, and then we did a re-rack. Mm -hmm. So I was first, I was last to drop in finals for the first two runs, and then after two runs, I was sat in third place. Uh, so okay. then I dropped third from last for my final run. Right, okay. So then, yeah, so sure. then Godziak was last to drop, and then Chance was second last to drop. So by the time it got back to me for my final run, I was guaranteed third place. So it was kind of a decision in the start gate to go, do you take third or do you drop in and try that extra bit more and try and get second and or you first? just blank that crash out? you just seen like a colleague, a friend, like a fellow competitor crash, like literally right in front of your eyes. Yeah. Do you just like... It, yeah, it was just kind of like, I seen him stand right. up and he was all right. And okay. it was like, yeah. cool, he's good, let's go. <laughs> like, yeah, it was... Um, yeah, but I mean, my final run, it was like, I couldn't, I was kind of in two minds whether to try, take third, because third an unbelievable finish as well so I was like well I was like well I like there is no pressure to drop in now and do a really good run if I if I like there's no need to but I, I could try 89.18 here we go the guy on do? the crest of a wave dropping into his third and final run massive start he's done of it again a 360 quadruple bar spin it's ridiculous creating airtime by going massive again with a cash roll Cash roll was perfect. It's amazing how consistent this guy's proved. Flip flop up and a hot oh! tail whip in. He's adding tricks. He's going for it. Triple, triple, trip drive on the flat drop. One, two, double tail whip. He's added in two places. I'm holding What's him he got now. Back flip bars. Oh, he holds it. Going. He holds it. Last jab, he gets yes. it. Jake Atkinson. What's that going to do? It's a scorcher for his third run. Yes, Jake Atkinson. So when did you compose this run? I mean, compose, I think, is the right, the right word, I guess. It must be um, you've seen it, you've seen other people, you've practised it. At what point do you, like, put it together in, like, a, a composition and go, that's the run I'm going to do? Is that, like, something you do in bed that night, just thinking it through? Or? No, I never actually... I, I never try and think about the runs and stuff when I'm not riding. Because it's just, just unnecessary like yeah, okay. thoughts. I don't know. I don't. I'll only think about what runs I'm going to do and what's going to work when I'm actually riding the course. Like for the for for a, for a long part of the uh, of the practice and like riding the event, I was like, I really wanted to cash roll the really long jump, but then I didn't think I could spin slow enough to do it on that jump. Right. Because I was originally gonna on the step up that I did cash roll. And I was gonna double whip that and then cash roll the long one. But then I was like, well, if I cash roll a step up, then I've got to double whip. So if you cash roll one. too fast, you're coming up short on the jump? No, I'd over rotate. Because okay. you're doing like the front flip 360. If you sp if I just spam too hard straight away off the takeoff, there's no way I could have slowed it down enough because the jump's so long. So you just, you just almost end up back on your side. And you struggled to get control of the bike and land on your wheels. Yeah, so I just didn't want to risk trying that because it was such a long and big landing. It was like, I don't know if it'll work. I've never done anything that big. It was like... Awesome. It was, I mean, it was a fantastic run to watch. And you had to like just go back and rewind it and, and, and see. I mean, I was watching it. I was in, I was in tears. I, like, I, know, I know how hard you've worked yeah. and the process you've gone through to get onto that stage. Um, I was, I was really emotional watching it. I, I don't mind admitting it. It was incredible. I mean, this is your biggest event so yeah. far. By, you know, and to be invited to this and everything else, we've got to, we have to ask the question now, what, what comes next? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's all kind of is all based on how the rest of the year goes now. Um, I think I'm currently sitting second for Rookie of the Year. So... Uh, it's sort of between uh, me, Toby, and Chance are all very close together. Like I think I'm thirty points behind Toby. He's first, and thirty points is nothing because that's that's one position in one event. And mm. yeah. So, um, and then yeah, Chance is uh, like a hundred points behind, but he's only ridden two events. Me and Toby have both ridden three. So, 
And so, and surely the, I mean, you talked about this, you're, the big dream is, is Crankworks. Yeah. It's, um, which is like an, the another level on probably what most, most people have seen of Slope Style on the TV. Yeah, yeah, so that's what the, yeah, so the Rookie of the Year, that's what that will be next. So whoever, whoever finishes first for Rookie of the Year this year, which looking at it now, it, it's probably, mo- most likely it'll be Chance, Toby or me from the, from the point basis at currently. Um, whether there's some people that ride the two gold events in Canada and then the gold event in Spain that could also like get in, but yeah, the, whoever finishes first um, for that will get the invite to Rotorua next year for New Zealand Crankworks. <laughs> so, what does that journey look like for you in order for you to to get there? Is this where's the next gold event? Where can you score points now? Um, so, um, Big White in Canada in uh, two, three weeks yeah. um, will is the next gold event. You've got the invitation. Yeah, I've got the invitation. You've got the money. <laughs> got the money now, yeah. <laughs> got the money, got the invitation, and then, yeah, I just got the invitation to Silver Star, which is two weeks after, which is Brett Reader's Slope Style Compound, which is another gold event, which is also Canada, which is... Uh, the week after Joyride, so it'll be like Big White and then watch Joyride and then Silver Star. So two gold events and then come back and be literally get get home and then go again straight to Spain for the final gold event of the year. So I've got three more as long as all go planned. Three more good solid opportunities. Yeah, and it's you, so. you you ranked your overall ranking comes off your three best finishes. So I've currently got a second place in a gold, which is really good. Um, and then I've got a first in silver and a second in silver, but the second and first in silver will hopefully be gone, and I can get three pretty good gold finishes. That's the, I mean, that's the aim. Yeah. But that's not, good. It not... sounds like you've got it all worked out. Yeah. So you've got a sponsorship to get you. Well, you've got money to get yourself to yeah. Canada. The next two are a bit of a still an unknown, I guess. Well, yeah, because I mean, yeah, the next two are the next two golds are both in Canada, so. Um, Canada's quite good actually because uh, like all accommodation and stuff is sorted by events, so it's it's going to be not too bad. So and you're doing this all unsponsored. I mean, I know that yeah. we help you out with things like suspension forks and time off and yeah. and bits and pieces like that and uh, stocks gloves. Yeah, they like jerseys and stuff. And then yeah. yeah, and I know that people are approaching you all the time for you know bikes and what you need right now is <laughs> is money right yeah yeah exactly yeah <laughs> you need money to live get to canada get to new zealand and get to yeah. these things so if there's anyone watching like you can contact jake through tiktok instagram we'll put all these links below yeah, youtube you can see jake's full view um run as well on red bull tv and and on that as well and um yeah how to start that conversation because this is a, this is an exciting future we could see a a UK rider on the <laughs> in in slope style again. I'm very quickly wondering. Uh, entertain me a little bit on this. So, just remembering your first few days here. Yes. As an apprentice. Yeah. Fresh out of school, you were not academically minded. No. School system did not suit how your brain no. works. And I think, um, looking at where you are now, you are very much a visual and kinesthetic learner. I've seen that if you can see something and if you can feel it you can work it out, you can probably yeah. solve it. And your intelligence is based around visual learning and kinesthetic learning. Yeah. I've seen you uh, learn how to learn. <laughs> Does yeah. that make sense? Yeah. Uh, do you think any of what you've learned here as being a mechanic and recognising the steps you take to learn and figure something out, do you think that's been applied? Or do you think those two things have... Um, I think... Yeah, I think I've definitely... I mean, yeah, I've definitely learned. Uh, learned a lot here like through here I think but always the whole time I've ridden like BMX and mountain bike I could never learn and trials from when I started um, I could never learn by either being like told how to do something or like if someone was to give me instructions on how to do something it was like no idea oh I've experienced that yeah <laughs> like yeah <laughs> like, like I don't yeah it's not like yeah, it's not like out of not listening. If someone tells me how to do something, I'm just like, I have no idea. Like it just doesn't. I just doesn't like really compute. But if someone, like if someone does a trick, and it's kind of always been like that. If I can watch someone do a trick, or if I if I see someone do something, like on Instagram, say I'll screen record it and I can like watch it back and slow it down. 
and just watch it a few times and then it kind of it just makes sense it usually works yeah i mean i know like that. when you like, started doing suspension servicing and yeah. stuff i could show you things but and you could read things off the tech docs but yeah, for you i need to lock you in that room for an hour and you figure it out yeah just <laughs> yeah. just yeah like watch someone else do it and then just yeah do it because I do, yeah, I don't know. It's, it's it's quite a weird thing, but I do. Yeah, on it, like when I when I watch someone do something, it like oh, it makes sense. It's um, it's an incredible, and I think now you've got that skill of like this is how I Jake Atkinson. This is how I learn stuff. Yeah. Um, could you now look at David Godwin to Jack's little maneuver? And look at he's backwards before he's, he's actually facing the wrong way before. I don't know if he'll have ever seen the landing until he lands. You know. What on earth? That cash roll, and off, can you watch that? Yeah. Have you figured it out how he did it? Yeah, I think I think I could get pretty close, if not probably. I'd definitely give it a good go. I reckon it'd come round. I don't know if I'd ride out of it, but it'd definitely come round. <laughs> like, I understand exactly how to do it. I just it's trying it. It's yeah. It's That's... taking that risk to try it, but no, I, yeah, I understand the concept of how that trick works. Just... That's so interesting. I think you started to recognise that. Yeah. In yourself, and it's. I, I think that's probably what's accelerated how you're oh, yeah, progressing absolutely. through this is you just suddenly clicked if i need to learn a trick this is how i learn a trick i need to watch it feel it yeah. you know experience it like when you've been talking you've been talking about how you maneuver the bike you do it very yeah. much kinesthetic isn't it yeah, yeah. it's so interesting i think we could talk for ages so this is it this is your red bull trophy this is your first big trophy you're going to cherish that forever yeah three thousand seven hundred and fifty euros cash <laughs> In going straight on a flight to Canada. Yeah. Uh, I love that. We're going to try and support you as best we possibly can. I would love to be your sponsor. Sadly, it's not in my finances. Hopefully, someone out there is watching this and can take this, share it, pass the word on, and see if we can get this guy to Crankworks. Thanks, Jay. Well done.